What's up guys? How's everyone doing? Today we're going to be going over a match I had. This was in August of last year. Um, this was at the the IBJJF Long Beach Pro League, I believe it was. Now, I chose this match because it, there's a lot of exciting scrambles, a lot of movement, and I figured we can learn something from going over it. So, this is against Tanner Rice. I faced Tanner Rice a few times now. Um, once at Pan Am's. Actually, I think maybe three times. I can't remember the first time, but I'm pretty sure we fought, we faced each other three times. So in this match, what I'm looking for here, like for me, this tournament is more of like a practice tournament. Like I go to these tournaments to like try out my techniques that I've been working on, try out uh, new things I've been trying to make work in the gym and see if they work in competition. This was one of the first ones where I tried a really interesting sweep that someone from Poland showed me actually. And I'm not sure if I've, I, I don't know if I've showed it on, the website before because it's pretty complex and I didn't want to overwhelm people with it uh, but let's get into it so you'll see I'm working this position a lot with the grip here uh, let me pull up my my cursor how do I do this again I think I... yeah so that grip you saw there it's kind of my go-to grip I've been using I feel like it's really effective to set up sweeps um, and just gives you really good overall control. Where was it? Oh, here it is. So this gives you a really clear angle of it. So I, I like to invert, underhook the leg after grabbing. So I grab the, the grip with my left hand first, and then I pass it to my right hand, and then I start to invert here. And what this does is it puts a lot of pressure downwards, breaking his posture here, as well as allowing me a good hook behind his knee. So what I can do with this arm here, this arm that's back like this, it helps me as I pull down and his posture is getting broken, I can bring my arm in and bend his knee in towards me, which further breaks his posture and it lets me set up sweeps and things like that. So it's very effective. You'll see he's gripping my top leg here, which is good on his part because I want to bring that leg around to this side of his body. Or I guess it would look like this. It comes around this way here. So let's move on with the match a little. I haven't watched this one in a long time, so... So yeah, you saw I broke his posture there. I just tug, hugged right behind his knee like that, pulled his knee down, and then I immediately reached to his pants here. Reaching to the pants like this further helps me keep break his posture. So now I have pressure on his lapel breaking his posture. I have pressure on his knee breaking his posture. And then my left hand is here gripping, also breaking his posture down. So all of his weight is on this foot. He's going to be a little off balance, um, and I'm fully in control in this position. So from here... See, he's trying to control my leg. He can feel that I want to invert. Most people will realize that, like, oh, he wants to invert, and so he'll try and control that top leg. Or if they've ever just seen you do it before or have experience against it. So he's trying to block that leg. Unfortunately, like, this is a very powerful position. You can swing your leg around pretty easily here. And this time I didn't bring my head on the inside because of the way he moved, so I end up just sort of spinning almost to like a what could be, in, like, enter into a 50-50 position. Um... So he sort of defended my go-to sweep from here, but I end up in a good, pretty good position anyways where I'm just underneath like this. And if I remember correctly, the beginning of this match is a little slow. He kind of relinquishes the position. Like he feels like I have him in X guard here, basically. And he kind of relinquishes it because he feels... A lot of times when you have a really strong sweep with the lapels, people will feel in danger and they sort of sit to their butt hoping that they can disengage the position and then maybe come back on top. So what I like to do is when people sit to their butt, I just control the bottom leg. And I talked about this in the last video. Uh, I control this bottom leg to make sure that he can't bring this leg underneath him. So he can't do his proper stand and base to have his have power to win this dog fight. Where my leg is totally free here, he's controlling this hand or this leg with his hand. So all I have to do is control his bottom leg, make sure his grip is not on my pants of any in any way, and I sit to my left side here, making sure that I'm on that hip, and then I'm able to get up from here. It gives you a lot of power in the actual dog fight position. So there, you saw I moved my foot to the outside. You never want to get up with your foot on the inside here. If you leave your foot on the inside of his pants or inside of his legs, he can just go into single leg X or something like that and possibly have a good angle to come back up yourself or his, himself. So from here, a very important thing is the second you sweep, it's important to go immediately into some sort of pass attempt. It doesn't matter if it fails or not. You just need to attack. And he feels the same urgency. Like he just got swept. He needs to sweep back right away or do something. So he comes up on a single and 
uh, I stuff it. Now, this is a pretty dangerous position because it's like, what if I just pull guard again? He'd be down two points. I'd be up two points. So he makes the right decision in pulling guard because he probably realized, like, oh, shoot, if this guy pulls guard, now I'm down two points in my guard. So stepping over this leg here, it's very important. You always want to step over the leg, especially when they have this Delaheva hook here. Stepping over the leg kills a lot of their attacks. Most Delaheva attacks involve this leg here. So if you step over that leg and start to sit your butt on it like this, you're going to open yourself up for a lot of passes as well as taking away the effectiveness of his Delaheva because he needs to put this in like my bicep, um, in my hip, anywhere to sort of elevate me or bring my weight over the top of him this way. So by stepping over, you can shut down a lot of his options to attack. And look here. So I sit down and I actually underhook his leg. Underhooking, uh, uh, actually... Yeah, I guess we'll just go from here. Underhooking the leg, see how it popped off the, the actual Delaheva? So you underhook the leg to pop off the Delaheva, and then he's in a position here where he's not really playing any guard. Like You couldn't call this a guard. It's not Delaheva, it's not Spider, it's not Butterfly, but his foot is here underneath my butt like this, and he's sort of in a vulnerable position, and I'm in an advantageous passing position here. From here, I can attack however I want. Probably going to like a side smash. I think I'm gripping with my left hand on his collar up here, so I'd probably be looking for some sort of... Uh, long step probably from here is what I usually go for. We can see for ourselves. See, he's controlling my ankle here, which isn't a big problem, but it looks like I address it a little bit. I sort of reach for it, but he doesn't actually, he just sort of lets go. So look, the Delhi, he was shut down. He doesn't actually have uh, any control here other than the pants grip. That's the only thing that's really giving him control. Left leg is sort of hindering him at this point because I have my grip on the shin here. You'll notice I'm not gripping on the knee because if you grip on the knee, he's still free to rotate his foot in any way he wants. Uh, but if you grip a little like mid shin, he's not actually going to be able to swing this leg in front of my arm. That's a nice little detail that if you haven't been using, you should use. And usually I like to go for a long step from here. Oh, it looks like I'm sort of trying to set up a knee cut. I don't know what I'm trying to accomplish here. I guess I was trying to set up sort of an knee cut of some kind. Oh, he does a good attack here. He actually gets underneath me pretty good. Pulls me to single leg X, trying to elevate. See, I grip both both collars here. If you don't grip both collars, he's going to get the leverage to be able to sweep you over backwards. So I like to grip both collars and pinch your knees together. Pinching both knees together there can give you a lot of uh, base in this position as well as gripping the collars to make sure that if he tries to pull you back, you're just going to be pulling on these collars to maintain your, your posture and positioning. He may sweep me though, I'm not, I don't actually remember what happened. I'm reaching to pop the foot off my hip here. It looks like his foot got caught. But I'm gonna reach to pop the foot off the hip and then start to attack a pass immediately. We're sort of in a scramble. He's gonna end up with both pants grips here. So this is a really strong position for him and one that's like, you don't see a lot of people teach this sweep, but every high level guy attacks this sweep because it's just so effective, but no one teaches it. And it's really, you just get to any position that involves a single leg X, X guard, anything. If you're having trouble sweeping the guy, you just grab both their pants and just stand up basically. You just like grab both their pants and just drive like a double leg. It's very, very effective. Oh, he doesn't actually sit up there. He sort of goes for a more invert, like Baron Bolo inversion, where he's trying to go for like a crab ride. So I swing my leg to the outside to like shut down his inversion and force him back to the face in me head on, which is obviously better for me. And then I start to try a uh, long step pass there. Or actually, that was an X pass, my bad. Uh, where was it? Yeah, right here. So as I bring my leg to the outside, you see how it forces him to rotate back to face me, which allows me to go for an immediate pass. And whenever you're in these transitional positions, that's when you need to attack. Like, look, he doesn't have grips, so that's my cue to attack. If I notice that he doesn't have grips on me, I need to be moving, because that's my advantage for being on top, is I have the power of movement, and he has to sort of react to my movements at that point. And if he's reacting, that means he, he's going to be a second slow on everything I do. So I get to dictate the pace at this point. So that's why you see me, whenever someone doesn't have grips in these transitional positions, I drive immediately and go for an attack and puts them on the, the defense. And he manages to get a strong grip on the pants, which is like a really good safe position. And like I said, I try and control that grip always when someone has it on my ankle to try and break the grip and I go for a long step to attack. Now, sometimes long steps, you don't necessarily have to pass the guard. You can just force the guy to invert here or possibly turtle or do some sort of defensive movement that takes him out of an offensive guard. And I say this all the time when I'm teaching that the pass doesn't necessarily need to pass. It just needs to take them out of an offensive guard. As long as they're not in Delaheva, they're not in Spider, they're not in uh, Lasso, they're not in half guard any of those positions are good for him right but look what is this guard this isn't a guard 
He's purely on the defensive. So if you're attacking someone and you can force him to be constantly just trying to recover the guard, then you're going to be in a really good spot to keep attacking, right? So that's one thing a lot of people don't realize is like, and when the pass doesn't work, you shouldn't stop. You need to immediately transition into another pass because you need to keep him in this vulnerable position where he's not playing a guard. So I immediately go to double under. So keep attacking the position and he's slowly regaining his grips. Now he's back in a guard. He's got the spider grip here and I'm, I'm going to try and get out of this, but he manages to put me back into an, uh, a defensive and offensive guard here, right? So I did my attack. I did what I could, but he was able to recover. But that's you sort of rinse and repeat that process at that point. And that's what most high-level guys are going to do. And most people do this already. I'm just explaining it for those that maybe ha aren't aware of the the sequences and the, like the systems that people implement. So we start back in this position. I go for collar control just because against the spider guard guy, he wants to keep you away. So it's probably better to close the distance, right? He wants to push me away, as you can see. So I'm just fighting against that, trying to put more pressure instead. Go for another long step. Like I said, not necessarily, doesn't have to pass. Just has to put him in a defensive position here. You'll see I'm just driving around, driving around. He's defending. He's pushing on me. He's pushing on me. And I managed to actually get almost past, and he has to turtle to defend. But he does a really good recovery. Tanner's guard is super good. And he's back into that inverted position, but he manages to keep the uh, sleeve grip this time. I'm not able to capitalize on it. Oh, something crazy happened here. Oh, he, he does a crazy sweep here. I forgot about this. I'm not sure exactly what happens. Oh, so he just ca he called my he called out my, my attack there. So like I do this this pass all the time where if someone has a uh, hook here on the outside, I drop my shin over the top of it. Let's see if I do it right here. So to break the grip on my pants, I can drop my shin over the top of his shin. He has a grip on my pants right here on the, on the bottom side. I'm trying to break that grip by dropping my shin over his shin. But he saw that I was going to do that, which is like no one sees this. I don't know how he like I don't know if he just was came up at the same time or he just had super good reflexes. But he saw I was going to do that. and My weight was off and he capitalized on it and he kept that grip on my pants. It's like in between his legs here. He's holding my leg in between his legs. Really weird position. Uh, but it was a good um, counter to my pass. Luckily, I had a grip here, and I managed. I had my hook in, kind of, and I just. We, this, was, this was just a scramble at this point. We just sort of fell into this position, but it was a really good counter by him. So we we're out of bounds, but it was a submission attack, so I get two points from right there. And moving on, I think the match sort of slows down a little bit at this point. So he pulls guard again, and I'm just working to pass continually. When you have a point lead, it's very important not to become uh, complacent in your lead because if you let him keep setting up guards or setting up attacks, he, he has a chance to come back. But if I stay in these offensive positions, like this over-under position here, he's not playing a guard again, right? So he's not playing a guard, which means he's not attacking me, which means I'm probably not in danger, right? If you just sit and try to chill with your point lead while he has spider guard or lasso or any offensive guard, De La Hiva, you there's a chance that he can sweep you and there's nothing you can do about it. Because some people's sweeps are just really good. But if you just spend all of the time focusing on putting yourself into positions where he's not playing a guard and you're in an attacking guard pass position, your chances of success are going to be much higher. So we're in just a really weird grip here. I don't know what was going on here. But I'm just trying to pass again, trying to put pressure. Um, I, there wasn't really like any mentionable pass. I just had the lapel in a weird way. But nothing was really happening there. I think I go through another blitz here. So I started going over under because I, I'm a spider guard guy and I play a lot of open guard and I know that over under gives me a hard time. So if you're going against some guy like that, you got to use your your own weaknesses against them, right? If you know that that's their, your style or their style and you play a similar style, think about what works against you. Oh man, he almost freaking knocked me out there. Jeez, that was a good spider guard sweep attempt at least. And I just was basing here. So now he has double sleeve grips. Now this is really troublesome because these grips are really hard to break. Double sleeve grips are the worst. Especially if the guy is content to just really hang on to them and wait for an opening. These grips can be very difficult to break. Especially if they have really strong grips. Which most black belts do already. 
I try and weave out. So I just go for like the stand up, stand up deadlift attack here. Oh, this is a six sweep. Tanner does a sweep all the time. This like weird inversion thing. I don't know what to call it. Say no to crack, guys. So here, I, I try and attack the long step again. These are just good scrambles. Like, you got to always look for the opportunity to attack. I mean, oh, there's another weird scramble. What the heck? All these flying reverse triangles. Oh, shoot. We missed something cool. So I go for another blitz here. I think time's getting a little lower on the clock. I realize it's time to go for another big attack. Go for another long step. This time I reach deep on the back. I hadn't done this yet. This can mix up your opponents. If you're doing a long step on the collar and you mix it up and go for a long step over the back instead, this can throw people off because you've been doing something the same the entire fight. If you mix it up, it can really throw off their reaction to it. So that's the reason I did that. He still defends it. I'm trying to circle around, circle around. Dang, he does a super good scramble by him. Now, because it's an advan near advantage for me because of the near pass, he doesn't actually get points for this. Like, even though I end up on bottom, I just get an advantage there. So that's why in jiu-jitsu, it's not dangerous to go for an attack. Because if you, as long as you get an advantage, it's very rare that you're going to be punished for attacking, even if you end up on bottom. Because if you end up, if you get an advantage by, and they turtle or turn or go to their knees in any way, usually it's not going to be points for them. But you can get a lot of advantage leads. That's how Leandro Lowe wins so many matches. Is he constantly attacks, and what by attacking he's gaining a lead and advantages. And even if he ends up on bottom, that's fine because he got the advantage for the movement. Maybe they end up on top, but he got a, he got a point lead, and now he's on bottom in a comfortable position for him. And so here, I think I'm just trying to lock in the victory. I pull guard and start to set up some uh, some sweeps. This was the position I was talking about. The guard, new guard, I was trying. That a guy from Poland showed me. So I lasso here. Let's see if I can get it to play and draw at the same time. So I lasso here, and I switch to the hand. I switch to my left hand. Then my right hand is going to reach underneath. I guess it would look like this. So my right hand reaches underneath here. My lapel is in the, my left hand here. I reach my right hand underneath and over the top and grab the lapel and pass it to that hand. See. I pass it to the hand, the lapel is on the inside, and in that that motion isolated his leg and allows me to spin through and come up on the ankle. Kind of a complex movement. I don't remember if I was showing it on here. I probably have. I'm pretty sure the video the the video's on Keenan Online. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that ends out the fight here. I'm just trying to stay on top at this point. I go for another long step style pass, grabbing the bottom leg. And that was the match, yeah. I don't think he, yeah, so I just solidified going over under style because over under is super hard to, for someone to sweep you from. So that was a really good match against Tanner. Tanner's a super nice guy. Really, really talented too. One of the best Americans for sure. Um, so yeah, there you go, guys. Another match breakdown. Stay tuned for more of these and I'll see you all next time.